Hello everyone, welcome back. We continue uh, the discussion on wave equation in more than one dimension. Uh, in this lecture, we discuss another interesting application of method of descent uh, to the so called telegraph equation. So now we are going to descend from two dimensional wave equation to a second order equation in one space dimension. Okay, so let me start with the problem. So let me start with a general second order equation. So the principal part that is the terms containing the highest derivative still wave operator and now we add these lower order terms alpha u x plus beta u t plus gamma u equal to 0 where all alpha beta gamma are constants ok uh, so we will make some simplification some simplifications are possible here so we can get rid of certain terms by simple uh, change of variables so for that purpose so we put v of x t is equal to exponential of a x plus b t into u of x t so u of u satisfies this given equation and now we will see what this v satisfies if we choose appropriate constants a and b ok so a and b are constants ok so simple differentiation so product rule and Leibniz rule so we find this derivatives of v with respect to t and x so they are very easily uh, computable so the here are the expressions for <coughs> uh, the first and second derivatives of v in terms of those of u ok and now let us form this v t t minus c square v x x ok so looking at the expressions here so this exponential factor is common so you take that exponential term uh, outside and then inside you have u t t minus c square u x x coming from the second derivatives so v t t there is u t t here there is u x x here so that is fine but they also contain lower order terms uh, u and u sub t so those are added here so we have b square u plus 2 b u t minus a square c square u minus 2 a c square u x ok so this constant a and b are at our disposal so we can choose them so here we make the choice so we choose 2 b equal to beta so beta is in the given equation so alpha beta gamma are in the given equation so this coefficient of uh, the first derivative of u with respect to t so we, that is beta there so we choose this b equal to 2b uh, equal to beta and similarly this 2ac square equal to minus alpha ok so with this choice so now since you satisfy this equation so let us use that so u t t minus c square u x x plus alpha u x plus beta u t equal to minus gamma u and that is what I have written here and uh, these two things are coming from this change of variable so there are u terms also here so b square minus a square c square minus gamma u ok and let us call this constant the coefficient of u as minus lambda ok and again so if I take that lambda out so this product is precisely this ok so with this change of variables so this function v satisfies this 
second order equation okay so there is a, so it's not wave equation but it's there is a term lambda v coming there okay and this is called the telegraph equation in the literature uh, you also find that so if this uh, you replace this v by v sub t that is also called telegraph equation in some textbooks uh, in either case now just now we have learned that even if it is vt we can always transform that equation to an equation of this form okay so uh, so since a general second order equation of this form can always be reduced to the telegraph equation we now consider the initial value problem for this telegraph equation okay so just <coughs> so just remember here so this is x is in r so this is one dimension one space dimensional okay so just remember that okay so the only difference between wave equation and this is that we have a lower order term namely lambda u equal to 0 and since it's again second order equation so we prescribe two initial conditions so this is the initial value problem now we try to uh, obtain a formula for the solution uh, using the method of descent okay so for that purpose so just write x1 is equal to x okay and consider this function so first assume that this coefficient lambda is positive so if lambda equal to 0 this is just one dimensional wave equation and we already know that d'Alembert's formula gives us the solution okay so first assume this lambda is positive and consider this function of two space variables now v of x1 x2 t uh, which is equal to u of x1 t okay so again u is solution of that equation into cos root lambda by c x2 okay so this is uh, you can say separated variables x1 and x2 are separated here okay uh, so since i am assuming lambda positive so that root lambda is also positive okay and again simple computations so x2 comes only here so the second derivative of uh, v with respect to t is same as second derivative of u with respect to t into this cosine factor okay and similarly the second derivative with respect to x1 variable okay so x2 is only there uh, so we are also get u x1 x1 into cos of this variable okay what about v x2 x2 okay the second derivative of v with respect to x2 variable okay and that's only we have to differentiate this cosine function so if we differentiate cosine function twice we get back again cosine function with a negative sign of course this constant also will produce a constant here that is lambda by c square okay and now you see that <coughs> compute this wave operator on v so v t t minus c square into v x1 v x2 so this is nothing but uh, in our earlier notation so temporary notation so this is the Laplacian in two dimensions okay and you plug in these computations so again this cosine factor is everywhere so that comes out and in the bracket you have utt minus c square u x1 x1 plus lambda u and you since you satisfy the given equation so that is g so you you satisfy the telegraph equation then with this change of variables 
V satisfies the wave equation to so this is just two wave equation. Okay, so what about the initial conditions? So they are also very easy to uh, compute. Okay, so only T appears in this factor, there is no T there. So this u x10 is just phi of x1 and u sub t x10 is psi of x and that just multiplies by this cosine factor. Okay. And important to notice again, just look at this transformation we are using. So we get back, once we know the uh, once V is found, we can recover U by this simple, very, very simple thing, right? So V on X1, you put X2, 0. So that cosine factor, when you when you put X2 equal to 0, produces 1 and we get back our original function V. Okay. And now, since V satisfies, two-dimensional wave equation, we can use Kirchhoff formula we have already derived and then in the solution, we just substitute x2 equal to 0. Then we get back our uh, required solution u. Okay. So by Kirchhoff formula, so this is Kirchhoff formula gives us two-dimensional So V of x1, x2, t is 1 by 2 pi c, double integral over this ball of radius c t centered at x into the initial condition comes into picture. So initial conditions are here, psi for v t, so psi of y1 cos of root lambda by c y2, c square t square minus r square square root dy1 dy2. Just recall, so this uh, we derived in the previous class. And uh, then the second term coming from the other data phi, so d by dt, so same term except that psi is replaced by phi. Okay, and here again r square is x1 minus y1 square plus x2 minus y2 square. So that's uh, this uh, notation for this R. Okay. And uh, since this double integral and uh, more or less the variables y1 and y2 are separated, they are still together here, but at least in the numerator they are separated. So let's uh, write this double integral as iterated integral first integrating with respect to y2 and then with respect to y1, okay. That's what I have written here. So this double integral we are writing as iterated integral, first with respect to y2 variable and then with respect to y1 variable. So it's easy to calculate the uh, limits in the integral of both variables y1 and y2, okay. And again some notation here, so this uh, S is C square T square minus X1 minus Y1 square, okay. So that's writing this double integral as it read. Now comes the important 
uh, but so we are not interested in uh, this solution B in the entire uh, x1, x2 plane, but we are just interested in the line x2 equal to 0. Okay, so that will give us, okay, so this gives us, just remember that. Ux1 and that's what we want. Okay, so if you put x2 equal to 0, the inner integral, just look at the inner integral here. Okay, so that becomes minus s to s cos root lambda by c y2 and s square minus y2 square uh, to the half. Okay, so this one now we have written slightly differently here. So, taken this uh, x1 minus y1 square separately in that s and only y2 is there. Okay. Uh, and you see that this integrand is an even function of y2. Okay. And this is symmetric interval uh, about the origin. So, we can write this as 2 times integral 0 to s. And this form suggests that we use a change of variable, very simple change of variable namely y2 equal to s sin theta and that removes this uh, new uh, denominator and we get a very simple uh, looking formula namely integral 2 times that remains there 0 to pi by 2 cosine root lambda by c s sin theta d theta. Okay, so, we are using this change of variable here. So, y2 is equal to s into sin So, when y2 is yes, so you get pi by 2. So, that changes the field. And this one, okay, this integral is again special and that is related to the Bessel function of order 0 of the first kind. Okay. So, Bessel function has different uh, representations and one such representation is this given by this integral. Okay. So, this Bessel function uh, of order 0 and of first kind. So, some uh, material regarding this Bessel function. So, we have been using even in heat equation and it has again cropped up in this uh, solution of the telegraph equation. Okay, so, that those things will be written down and uh, provided for your reading. Okay. So, finally, so just uh, so this in inner integral we have computed now. So, that is in terms of the Bessel function. So, now we just put together. So, we get the required solution. So, again we go back to the original variable u of x t. So, that temporarily we put it as x1 and this one is given by v x1 0 t and that is just now we computed it is 1 by 2 c x 1 minus x t 2 x plus c t j 0 root lambda s psi 1 t by 1 and same thing comes here with psi replaced by uh, <coughs> phi. Okay, and notice that if lambda is 0 this j 0 j 0 of 0 
in our definition it is always normalized to be 1. So, if lambda is 0, the telegraph equation reduces to the wave equation. So, if lambda is 0, it reduces to the wave equation and that you can see even in this formula. Okay. So, when lambda is 0, this is just uh, 1. So, this is precisely what is there in the uh, D'Alembert's formula. Okay. So, this formula now involves some additional term in the integral. A known function. Okay. That is uh, important. So, this uh, special function of order 0 is very well studied and all its properties are uh, recorded very well. Okay. Okay, now what about the situation? Uh, so, here we started with lambda positive. Okay, so what if it is negative? Okay, so let us okay, so the case of is very simple again. Okay, so Okay, so now we write the equation as c square uxx. So instead of writing plus lambda u and assuming lambda, so we'll just write lambda zero and lambda. Rewrite it, rewrite it. Okay. And now again you write x1 equal to x and consider the function v of x1 x2 t is equal to same thing. So now you just instead of cos, you just use sin hyper cos cos hyperbolic okay root lambda by c yes. that's the only difference okay so all the computations are same the only difference now is if you compute the uh, second derivative with respect to x2 variable of this function v. So, this is just cos So, this will not change the sign. Earlier we had, since we had only cos there, so second derivative produced a minus cos, but the, for a hyperbolic function, so this is cosine hyperbolic function. So just let me just record what that is. So just okay. So same computations. So now you see that this uh, again this function v satisfies the two dimensional wave equation okay and now uh, the initial conditions on u get transformed to v with this additional factor of cosine hyperbolic okay 
and again important thing is so we recover this our function just by putting x2 equal to 0 okay so that's we want each recovery of our original function that's important right and if you do the same computation again so v satisfies now this v okay everything is same except that now you get instead of cos you get cosh that is the only difference you get okay and that's also called a vessel function of the second kind order 0 and of second time so this again i 0 so it's denoted by i so the first kind is denoted by j so the only difference is just to replace this by Gosh. So I just want you to bear this in mind so because we will be considering similar problems uh, for the Laplace equation and maybe even for the heat equation. Okay, so what we have shown here is okay, just uh, it's telegraph equation, all right, but it's more like an eigenvalue problem. One dimension thing. Okay. So what we have shown is there is a solution that is unique. For all lambda. If you think this as wave operator, okay, and so we are showing that so each real number is an eigenvalue of that operator. Okay, so I want to just comment on that. So again, when we come back to Laplace equation, we have occasion to recall this result. Okay. So that's fine. So just uh, uh, so so far, what we have done? Okay. So we just uh, introduce the method of spherical means. Just summarize. Okay, and uh, then we derived this Euler Poisson Lock equation, and with that help, and we could obtain solution in case n equal to three. Okay, by simple transformation and reducing the whole problem again to one dimensional 
wave equation and uh, then by method of descent so we obtain the formula for the n equal to 2 case and using again the method of descent so we also form for the telegraph okay and what about other n okay what about that is our next question so at least uh, we should answer little bit regarding that okay I will just explain and we continue next time discussion on that okay so this is the IVP for the wave equation So this is x in Rn and uh, t positive it's plus initial condition. Okay, let me not bother about that now. And what we did was use this method of spherical means. So that spherical mean. M U X R T and that satisfies Euler Poisson dark wave equation. So this is again a second order equation, but only in two variables. equal to 0. So this is Euler Poisson Darby equation. So when n equal to 3 by simple transformation by multiplying this spherical mean function mu by r we could reduce that to one dimensional wave equation. Okay. So when n is bigger than 3 certainly that will not work. So we have to look for a different kind of transformation okay so what we look for is an operator okay look for a differential operator okay i denote it by lm so this is j equal to 0 to m a j r to the power j plus 1 uh, d r j. Okay, so this operator d r is so yes, it's essentially an ordinary differential operator because only r variable is there but since we are also dealing with t so let me denote it by the partial derivative okay so what we want to do is this operate lm so if you call this star there so operate lm on both sides of star So what we get is, let me just write that and I will continue next time. So this LM, so that is a linear operator, so given star is also a linear equation, so there is absolutely no problem. So we just get 
lm of this operator There is absolutely no problem here. This will just become del square by del t square because this is t variable and that is r variable. So there is no problem there. So Lm M. Okay. But this is also a differential operator containing r derivatives and this is also differential operator uh, in R variables. So in general there will not be commutativity. So I can generate, just push this LM inside just like I did here. Okay, So there will be some uh, extra terms that will crop up Okay, and that somehow you want to reduce it to Remember, this is our goal. Lm. Yeah. So, if we succeed in doing that, so when I operate Lm on this operator, I should get this del square by del r square Lm u, and then we get wave equation in 1D satisfied by LM M. Okay, so the first task is to find this LM and then we have to also get back our original function U from all these operations so that should that uh, process of getting back q also should be simpler and we'll discuss these things in detail in the next class thank you